microcontroller has got a number of timers uh, inside it and those timers can be uh, uh, also used for uh, counting purposes. So, when it is used as timer, so it is driven by the clock that we have within the microcontroller and if you are counting some outside event, so you can uh, use it in counter mode and in that case uh, the events occurring in the outside world will be giving, giving as pulses to the microcontroller and the microcontroller will count the number of such events. So, we will see that this is very much useful particularly when you are designing embedded systems. So, it is so the we need to interact with the environment and the second important thing is that the delay part that we have seen so far the delay routines they have got uh, um, uh, they are they are soft delay that we have seen uh, in, in the sense that we are using some software instructions initializing some registers to some value and then decrement jump node zero type of instructions are used to see that uh, to in introduce some amount of delay but as you can understand that you cannot produce any arbitrary delay by those uh, by, by those instructions because the instructions have got a fixed number of machine cycles that are needed and each machine cycle has got a delay. So, when you are using those instructions so you can get only uh, some of the delay values that are possible. Whereas, uh, in if you need a very precise delay like supp suppose you are uh, operating a robotic hand. So, this hand has to move in a particular sequence and the delays are fixed or you are uh, doing say a traffic light controller uh, system then the lights should be turned on and off for some specific period of time. So, those values may not match exactly with uh, the soft delay values that can be produced using this 8051 instructions. So, in those cases we need to use uh, this precise timers. And uh, this, so, so we will see that these timers, they, the precisions are uh, very high. So, the as far as 8051 is concerned, so they, it has got two timer counters, the timer counter 0 and timer counter 1. They can be used as either timer to uh, produce uh, some delay, time delay. In that case, the source of the timer is the, 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 the clock source is the internal crystal frequency. Like whenever we have got a timer module uh, or a uh, uh, counter module, so this is basically if this is the module, so it, it, it is driven, uh, there are certain things like first thing is that it has to be operated with some clock signal. So, it will be operating on some clock and there will be some initial value loaded into the timer. So, this initial value will be loaded and then this uh, when this clock pulses are coming, so, based on this clock pulses, this so initial value that we have, so it will go on decrementing. And when it uh, underflows, or so, so if, if it is a decrementing timer, so when the value underflows, that is when the value becomes 0, then when it is trying to reduce to from uh, going down from 0 onwards, so one flag will be generated, which is uh, overflow or underflow flag, which is basically the timeout flag. Now, similarly, you can also have the concept of uh, up counting or up timing in the sense that you initialize the value uh, with some initial value and from that point onwards is, uh, it, it, it starts uh, uh, going upwards till some maximum value. So, that maximum value depends on the register that you have here to hold the uh, timer or the counter value. If that value is say 16 bit, so it can go up to uh, 65535 and after that there will be an overflow and when that overflow occurs then this flag will be set to say that the timer has overflown. So, essentially you get the time value. So, we will see that very precise time values can be generated by doing this thing. So, we can use this timer as a de time delay generator and the clock source is the internal clock frequency of 8051 or it can be used as a counter. So, in that case some external input from an input pin it will be used and that will count the number of events that have occurred in that pin from in the outside world. So, and that count value will be kept in the register. Now, this uh, clock pulses that we have, so this may be, uh, this may represent many things like say on a conveyor belt some items are passing. So, you can just, uh, you can, you can uh, note how many items has passed or if you have installed a system uh, at the entry of a room okay, uh, in the door like as, as persons are entering and exiting. So, these uh, values may be updated. So, that way we can have many such uh, examples. Okay. So, number of wheel rotations, 
any event that can generate some pulse. So, uh, the essential requirement is that whatever event we want to um, uh, count, so it should ultimately it should be converted into an electrical signal in the form of pulse. So, each event should uh, correspond to a pulse. So, if we can do that, then we can use it for this uh, um, counting purpose. So, we will first look into the timer operation. So, timer it is uh, set to some initial value of registers. So, uh, set the initial value for the register. So, this T H 0 and T L 0. So, these are the two registers that are used for this timer 0. So, it is time count high and the time count low or the time value high and time value low. Start the timer. So, then we there, 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 there is some way by which you can start the timer and 8051 will count up. So, previously we were talking about uh, count down or count up type of timer. So, in 8051, so this is a count up type of timer. So, it will start up counting from the value that you have noted uh, in this TH0 TL0 register pair. And now, um, uh, based on this uh, input from internal system clock, so it will be uh, updating, updating the value of those registers. And this when these registers will equal to 0, so that means there is an overflow. Okay. So, depending upon this uh, size of this TH0 TL0 registers, so uh, the, this uh, uh, register will overflow after some time. So, uh, after going the maximum value, it will come down, come to come back to 0. So, at that time, it will set a bit to denote that there is a timeout. So, this is the generic operation of the timer. On the other hand, when you are looking it as a counter, in that case, this uh, 8051, so this uh, pin number P 3.4 and the pin T 0. So, this is a multiplexed operation. So, when we discussed about the port 3, we said that bit number 4 is actually multiplexed with uh, T 0. So, T 0 is an external input, uh, it is basically uh, for timer 0 and this is for the events that are occurring. So, if we have some sort of uh, switch here connected to the T 0 such that when, whenever we close the switch, so it generates uh, the signal value becomes high and when you open the switch it becomes low. So, uh, basically, uh, so in this way we can uh, we can generate this pulse a very simple way to generate uh, this uh, uh, switch may be like this. So, we have got some resistor and then uh, we have got uh, say a switch here and then this point is say grounded and if we if we measure the voltage if we if we take the voltage at this point. Then whenever this switch is closed, you can understand that the value will become 0 and whenever the switch is open, the value will become 1. So, whenever this, so it is just the reverse so of this operation. So, so here uh, if we want that whenever it is uh, 1, so in that case whenever it is, whenever the switch is closed, the value should be 1. So, what you can do? You can put an inverter and then feed it to the T0 line. So, that way we can do. So, basically we can count the number of times this switch has been closed. Okay. So, it shows the number of events on uh, register. So, this counter will this now this T H 0 T L 0 pair. So, it will hold the number of events uh, that have occurred and the value will be stored in the register. For two timers, timer 0 and timer 1 or in that way counter 0 and counter 1 we have got two pins T 0 and T 1 that correspond to the uh, this external event. So, T 0 is for uh, counter 0 and T 1 is for counter 1. So, correspondingly they are multiplexed with uh, port 3 is bit number 4 and bit number 5. This uh, external uh, input comes in the there is the T x input pin. So, T x x equal to 0 or x equal to 1 either of them. So, we can have something like this. So, you are just uh, having this value and this is available in this register pair and you can possibly connect one LCD display here. So, that so that this uh, whatever be the count value that is uh, um, uh, available on the LCD. So, that way we can uh, have a system okay, that can display the uh, number of events that have occurred. Now, what are the registers that are going to use for this timer counter? So, T H 0, T L 0, T H 1 and T L 1. So, these are used for holding the time uh, timer values or the counter values. So, T H 0, T L 0 for timer 0 and T H 1, T L 1 for timer 1. 
there is one more register T mod which is timer mode register. So, this will tell uh, this um, timers we will see that they can be operated in various different modes and this T mod is basically holding the mode value. So, we can set these timers uh, to some particular mode before starting it so that it will operate accordingly. Then there is a T con register which is a timer control register. So, this is also useful and we will see that uh, some part of it is multiplexed with interrupts. So, it will control the timer operation and 8052 is an advanced version of 8051 and it has got three timer counters. So, instead of having two timer 0 and timer 1, it has got timer 2 also and uh, mm, these formats of this control registers uh, will be slightly different and we have got T 2 con. So, for controlling the timer 2 register. So, T H 2, T L 2. So, T 2 con, T H 2 and T L 2. So, they are for 8052, but normally we will be talking about 8051. So, we will restrict ourselves to two timers, uh, timer 1 and timer 0, timer 1 and accordingly we will see the setting of this T mod register, T con register and all that. So, basic registers for any timer is like this. So, both timer 0 and timer 1 they are 16 bit wide. So, they are 16 bit timers. So, these registers uh, they store the time uh, time delay as uh, as a timer. So, like how much time so you, you, are, you are initializing it to some value and from that point onwards so it will start going up. So, it will overflow when that 16 bit value that 65535 is crossed. So, in some sense we can say that it holds the time delay that is uh, remaining in the uh, timer okay. or if it is uh, counter then it will hold the number of events as a counter. So, this T A T T H 0 T L 0. Uh, so, timer 0 has got these two registers T H 0 T L 0 timer uh, this T H 0 is the higher order byte and T L 0 is the lower order byte. Similarly, timer 1 has got T H 1 and T L 1 registers out of that uh, T H 1 is the uh, higher byte and T L 1 is the lower byte. So, this 16 bit register it can be accessed as two separate uh, um, registers T H and T L. Okay. So, we will be seeing that while initializing these registers to some value. So, we have to do it in terms of uh, 8 bit registers. So, this is the structure. So, this uh, total I said that it is a 16 bit. So, D 0 to D 15 for timer 0 out of that D 0 to D 7 is in T L 0 and D 8 to D 15 is in T H 0. Though it is written like that, but we have to uh, put the values in uh, separately in T L 0, T H 0 and similarly we have got timer 1 that is divided into two 8 bit registers T L 1 and T H 1. So, they, these two registers are for holding the time value or the count value. Next we look into the T mod register or the timer mode register. So, uh, this is another 8 bit register. So, in this 8 bit register 4 bits are dedicated for timer 1, lower 4 bits are dedicated for timer 0 and among that uh, 4 bits the first most significant bit uh, is uh, the structure is similar for both the nibbles the structure is similar. The most significant bit is the is called gate. The next bit is called C by T that will indicate whether the operation is a counter operation or a timer operation and then the next two bits M0 and M1. So, they will identify the mode of the, uh, op the mode of the timer that we want to operate. So, this is one 8 bit register and it can be used a lower the 4 bits for timer 0 and upper 4 bits for timer 1. So, if you are not using say lower 4 bits, so you have you should set these values to all 0. And if you are using, if you are not using the upper 4 bits, then you should set all these upper 4 bits as 0, but it is not bit addressable. Okay. So, unlike um, other plus other uh, registers where I can set this uh, set reset the, these bits individually, here we cannot do that. So, we have to um, uh, prepare uh, the 8 bit pattern in some accumulator and then we have to move that pattern to this uh, T mod register or we can use this type of uh, absolute addressing. So, hash 21 hex. So, hash 21 hex means uh, it will be uh, so 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 1. So, for the upper upper timer, so it is 0 0 1 0. So, it is uh, gate is 0, count timer CT bit is 0, 
m 1 m 0. So, this says that it is 1 0. So, that is mode 2. So, it says that this upper one uh, the timer 2 timer 1 will be operated in mode 2 and this is 0 1 means this will be the lower the timer 0 will be operating in mode 1. So, we will see what are these modes slowly. So, let us proceed. So, next uh, looking it uh, looking into more detail the T mode T mode register. Now, you see that for m, uh, many of cases. So, what we want, want that these timers they may be uh, operated on two different uh, situations or two different type of controls in the sense that maybe I have an application where if some event has occurred externally then only the timer should be turned on and when it is running. So, it is using internal clock, but as long as some uh, activity is going on in the environment we should uh, count that. Okay. So, this is one type of situation another type of situation is just to produce period delay. So, I have a uh, I have to uh, I have activated one signal and maybe it has to be deactivated after some time. So, one type of application is like this. So, I have activated a signal say, um, say, say signal S 1 is activated and I want that uh, for example, in a traffic light controller system we want that red light should be on for say uh, 1 minute. Okay. So, this so once this red light is turned on. So, if S 1 corresponds to this red light. So, S 1 is so, so red light is turned on at this point. So, we want that for 1 minute this red light should be on. So, this is 1 minute. So, this is not guided by any external phenomena. Okay. So, once the light is turned on. So, microcontroller after 1 minute it should turn it off. So, this is one type of situation. So, pure time delay. So, I can say that these are basically I want to produce a precise time delay and for that purpose I am using it. In other cases there may be some external event and for which we want to uh, measure the time that is needed. For example, uh, say uh, we want to uh, we want to make a stopwatch. Okay. So, if we want to make a stopwatch then I have to uh, I have to uh, start the timer and then this uh, I have to when some external event occurs I have to I will press this stopwatch button. Okay. So, in my system if this is the system there is a uh, there, there is a watch button and when this watch input comes then only then only this timer should be activated and if this watch input is 0 then the timer should not work. So, maybe my watch goes like this. So, watch is on for this much time then it is off like this. So, I uh, the my timer should run in this period okay, and again it should run at this period and when this watch signal is low in this region it should not run fine the timer should be uh, stopped in bit in that time. So, I guess so, uh, so at this point of time it holds the starting from the watch uh, button. So, how much time has passed or if it is starting at this point. So, it can after that uh, again uh, the when the watch is activated. So, this value is remembered here. So, this value is carried over to this point and it will so continue like this. So, this way we can have uh, two different type of controls in the operation of timer. In one case the timer is controlled totally internally by the microcontroller and in the second case the timer is controlled uh, both by the external event and the internal controller. So, accordingly so this class is differentiation is made by this uh, gate. Okay. So, this gate bit so this tells when the, 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 the whether the counter has to the timer has to be enabled only while the int x pin is high. So, you remember that there are two int pins int 0 and int 1. So, then the int x uh, so for timer 1. So, if you set this gate bit to 1 then this timer will operate only if this int 1 pin is high and there is another control bit tr 1. So, we will see this tr 1 bit later. So, this tr 1 control bit is high. So, normally if you are if you are running the timer without uh, any external interference like say gate. So, in that case the gate bit should be set to 0 and to start the timer we have to set the corresponding tr bit to 1. Okay. So, start timer 1. So, we have to set tr 1 to 1 to start timer 0 we have to start the set tr 0 to 0. So, to run a timer what we have to do is first 
set the uh, timer value okay and then we have to set this tr bit okay the trx bit so that is the operation so uh, we'll see this location of this trx bit slightly later so now we, we have this gate bit is like that when cleared the timer will uh, uh, the timer is enabled whenever the trx control bit is set so if this gate bit is zero then uh, this uh, whenever trx is one the timer will operate if the gate is one so it is controlled by both the intx pin and the trx bit so both hardware and software will control the timer if gate is one if gate is zero only software will control the timer the next bit is c by t timer or counter select so it is uh, it is select uh, cleared for timer operation so if this bit is zero so we are willing to operate timer one in the timer mode and if this bit is one we want to operate the timer in the uh, counter mode okay so this tx pin should be high then uh, and uh, this uh, c by t pin should be high and then for inter as as i have already said that for internal operation when it is operating in the timer mode so microcontroller's crystal frequency will be taken as the clock and in case of uh, um, uh, counter operation this uh, this t0 and t1 pins so they will be used as input for the uh, event okay so this uh, t for for timer 1 it is t1 for timer 0 it is t0 then we have got two more bits m1 and m0 so they are called mode bit so depending upon the mode in which you want to operate this uh, timer so you have to set this m1 and m0 bits so this c by t bit so it is used to decide whether the timer is used as a delay generator or an event counter so if it is c by t is 0 so this will be operating as a timer so that's a delay generator and if c by t is 1 then it is a counter so this is for counting operation gate part so gate part every timer has a mean of uh, starting and stopping so gate equal to 0 and gate equal to 1 so gate equal to 0 means as i said that it is totally internal control so it is soft software controlled operation the start and stop of the timer will be controlled by the software by setting the tr bit okay so we'll see that tr bit so you can you, you, once you set the tr bit the timer will start when you want to stop the timer we have to clear the tr bit on the other hand this uh, gate equal to 1 so this is external control so we have got uh, so it is both by software and external source so both software and hardware will control the timer so this timer in this case will be enabled when int pin is high and the tr control pin is control bit is set okay that is tr so this is so this should be control bit it is not a pin it is a bit uh, in the some register so this bit should be set and then the timer will start and whenever to stop it either you can reset this tr bit or you can disable this uh, int okay so either of them can be done for stopping the timer and in this case to stop the timer you have to disable the tr bit so these are the modes of the uh, timer operation so we can have four different modes of operation with the timers mode 0 mode 1 mode 2 and mode 3 mode 0 is a 13 bit timer mode okay so this uh, 8 bits will be stored in uh, thx register and 5 bits will be in the tlx register so x is 0 or 1 so if you are upper so for timer 0 x equal to 0 so 13 bit timer so it, your uh, time time value that we have is 13 bit so this is the 13 bit values but uh, this uh, but i am using this thtl pair for holding the value fine so how to do it so this uh, thx will hold the higher order 8 bits and this tlx will have the lower order 5 bits so this is that 8 bit higher order 8 bit and lower order 5 bits it will be clubbed with three more zeros that will be holding the lower order uh, lower order 3 lower order 5 bits will be there in the tlx register on the other hand mode 1 is a 16 bit timer mode so we can get higher delay so it is 8 bit thx plus 8 bit tlx so total is 16 16 bit uh, timer value and there is another uh, very interesting time of type of timer structure that we have is called 8 bit auto reload 
that means oh, uh, so here uh, so it is after the timer has expired this uh, timeout bit has been set the timer will restart so it will restart with uh, some uh, initially set count uh, time value it will be restarting so in this case so 8 bit auto reload timer counter so here this uh, thx will hold the value which is to be reloaded into tlx each time it overflows so it is the so it is interesting like this so we have got this thx and tlx uh, registers register pair say th0 and tl0 now uh, this tl0 is actually operating as the timer so th0 just holds the initial value so your timer is an 8 bit timer so when this timer overflows then again this th0 value will be copied into tl0 and it will restart so if you are trying to generate a periodic uh, operation so this is very much useful so your periodic delay can be generated in uh, in this way so you can have this uh, th0 tl0 pair and uh, this th0 will be operating like that okay so this is very useful and there is another uh, timer mode which is known as split timer mode so we'll see this uh, when you go into that corresponding mode it is slightly complex so we'll go into that 